Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video. I'm here today with Professor James Trevelyan. He's the inventor and founder of personal air conditioning company, Close Comfort. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Alex. So uh, I thought we'd um, start at the beginning. You've invented a, a personal air conditioning unit with a difference. But before we get to that, can you please tell us a little bit about your background and why you decided to invent one? Well, I have a passion for Pakistan mangoes. <laughs> and to enjoy Pakistan mangoes, you have to be there in May and June mm -hmm. when it is very hot. To give you some idea, without an air conditioner, temperature in my bedroom is about 41 or 42 degrees at midnight. Mm. And, well, the government started load shedding long time before Adelaide. Or, or and, Sydney uh, this year, supposedly. <laughs> the power was off for an hour or so every other, every other hour. And I was lying in bed with sweat running down my brow, waiting for that AC to come back on. Yeah. And thinking, there's got to be a better way to keep cool. And then, of course, I heard the mosquitoes ah. lining up their targets. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm from Canberra and we have crazy hot uh, summers there. And Sydney's had a few crazy hot summers here too. So um, now, um, uh, you know, I guess the big question is, you know, it looks like one of the traditional portable air conditioning units that people have purchased in stores and they have these long hoses and yeah. if you don't have the hose going into the window properly, half the heat's coming back. I mean, what makes this one different to existing air conditioners and also to evaporative coolers? And, um, and also just on the whole evaporative cooler thing, those don't seem to work too well in high humidity. So, so you know, how does this one work? Well, that's the point. You see, in my bedroom, the humidity was about 60% mm -hmm. for a start. So let's go back to the origin of the invention. Yeah. To, to run through the power cuts, it had to run on a battery. Yeah. And so right from the start, the power consumption had to be 300 watts or less. Mm. And that's what we have today. That's the big advantage. And that uh, uses that, very little electricity. As you say in the uh, marketing, it's like the equivalent of four light bulbs. Just a four, four old-fashioned light bulbs, yeah. yes. Yes, and so at, at the moment, I can see it's got a standard AC uh, adapter, but you must have had the wires connecting to a 12 volt battery or something no, like no, that. No, because, How did you do it? Because you see the, the, the power cuts are there all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a battery backup power supply, uh -huh. which of course were originally brought in for their PCs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Unin uninterruptible then, power supply. And then of course people don't want to miss the end of the drama on TV. Yeah. So it'll run a TV, uh, run a few lights, a fan, so on and so forth. So yeah. that was the design power source. And of course it produces 250 volts. So we just plug into that. So you haven't got the uh, the traditional piping that you have on a normal portable air That's conditioner. Right. Yes. So how does it not end up adding heat to the room in the way that one of those units does? Well. That's the interesting thing. Because it uses so little power, mm -hmm. there's actually very little heat going into the room. And what we do is we move the heat from where I am mm -hmm. and put it up there near the ceiling where you can't feel it. Yep. So it does get a little bit warmer up there, but you need a very sensitive thermometer to measure it. Mm. Probably about a tenth of a degree centigrade if you have the windows open. And I guess that answers the question of why it's so much more energy efficient than a traditional air conditioner. And in addition, you can leave the windows open in this case. Yeah, no, there's, there's two aspects to that. First of all, of course, we're not wasting energy cooling the walls, the furniture, the ceilings, yeah. the floor. Which That's is where most of your power goes with a conventional air conditioner. And raises your electricity bills and crazily. And raises your electricity yeah. bill. Why are you paying money to cool the walls? I've never met a wall, a wall that complains <laughs> about the heat yet. <laughs> That's right. So the idea is just to create a microclimate around me, mm. where I am, and yeah. maybe my friend, uh, my wife, family sitting next to me on the TV watching the couch or lying on the bed. And if I just pan the camera down, we can see, I mean, it's sitting there on a, on a, like a shelf but it's a very small unit so it's it's uh, I think it was 17 kilograms very portable that's right it's about the size of an airline carry-on yeah and uh, that again was part of the requirement it had to be easily carried uh, portable and, and the beauty of it of course is you can use it anywhere mm. I mean, we, we use it all over the place in our house and uh, in Perth and in Pakistan of course and many yep. other places and because it's I mean it's a refrigerated unit inside it's got refrigeration so that means if you do transport it and if you have inadvertently put it on its side, you'd need to let it rest for a few hours like you would if you're transporting a fridge. Well, if you, if you turn it upside down, I guess, yes. yes. But if you just put it a little bit on the side, it's fine. Sure. Yeah, it's a very robust unit. Which is important. Absolutely. Totally and, the portable. And uh, so inside the unit, are there filters to clean? Does it, is there a canister for water? What, what's the maintenance required? Well, the first question people ask is where does the water go? Yes. Yeah. Because when you get something that's cold, the water gets condensed. Yeah. So just like the heat, we take the water from the front and we send it up to the ceiling mm -hmm. where it goes with the warm air. So it gets it out of your way, which is the important so thing. So is there no tray that water collects it? No. 
Excellent. There is, there is a tray at the back, yeah. just in case it ever fills up, but we've never actually filled one yet. Yeah, I mean, the, the, on the unit that I have, the tray was used to store the power cable and the remote. Exactly, that's exactly <laughs> what that one's doing. Yeah. So you don't have to, so, and... And, and filters, yeah, yep. well, there's, uh, there's three filters. There's one on the front here. Mm -hmm. I guess, get your fingers there. Mm -hmm. Lift it up. So that's very easy to just, clean. Yeah, you just wash it under the tap every couple of weeks or so if it gets dusty. You know, it depends how you use it. Some cases it'll need one, need every two weeks. Some cases it might go six months without sure. a clean. And that's just, uh, as you said, under the tap and drying it tap. out. And, yeah. And, and are there any, is there any other filter you can pull out and clean, or is, or is that There's it? another one here. Yeah. At the top. We pull this one out. That one's a piece of aquarium filter. Yeah. Very robust piece of foam. Mm -hmm. Let's put that back. And there's another one at the back. I'm not going to get yeah, up off my Yeah, sure, chair. sure. But that's. But I mean, they're all ju just as very, easy very as easy. that. Very, very yeah. easy. So, so absolutely minimal. Minimal maintenance. Mi yeah. Yes. Which is and, important. And the inside is just like a, a fridge. You know, it'll last for years. It's a permanently welded circuit. It never leaks. Again, simple, easy. Switch it on. Don't have to worry about it. The and essence of this is the is simplicity. So uh, one of the things I've seen with some of the newest devices is the ability to connect to Wi-Fi and then control it via your phone and even use uh, Google Home or Google Android to control it by voice. Uh, does this unit have that? And if it doesn't, uh, is it something you might introduce in the future? We might introduce it in the future, but actually, you know, the design is self-adapting. Yep. So it adapts to the conditions. It produces more cooling when you need it, when the humidity is really heavy and uh, less when you don't need it. And so really, you just open the, the back flap, which is the on-off switch. the back flap, and that's yep. the on switch. Yep. <laughs> and so that's it. There is a remote. There yeah. is a remote. You can control the temperature if you really want to. Yeah. But I mean, adding those other things would just add, I guess, cost to the unit. Which, it would add, yeah. add cost, complexity, and you know, we think that the, the importance of this unit is its elegant simplicity. Yeah, and keeping you cool. <laughs> Supposed you comfortable. To, yeah, keeping that's you cool. It. And, um, you know, is it possible that one day you might have a future unit that can be powered from a USB-C battery? The latest laptops have a thing called USB-C PD, stands for power delivery, and um, that's, you know, something well, that... You know. Here we're talking about evolution in batteries. Now, mm -hmm. a friend of mine actually ran it on a battery that's this big, ah. and it ran for about 10 minutes, Yep, uh, which was really amazing, you know, mm. to see this tiny little battery powering this thing, uh, but no. You know, you need a reasonable battery to keep you going all night if that's what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, in Pakistan, uh, they use uh, lead-acid uh, truck batteries, yep. which are used because there's several other things they want to run. Absolutely. So battery technology is moving, you know, at a reasonably pedestrian pace, but I'm sure in future we'll, we'll be able to issue a model with the batteries internal, but not for the time being. Sure. I was at an Intel event in 2007, and they were talking about s batteries with silver in them, which, which didn't take off. And they were talking about how the computing technology doubles every 18 months, but with batteries, the uh, power capacity doubled every 18 years. So it yeah, takes I a think, while. You know, uh, people are talking at the moment about a 6 to 8% improvement yeah. uh, per year, yeah. which is still significant. Yeah, I mean, well, we live in the era of electric cars and the, the, the desire to have those batteries power us for hundreds of kilometres. So you'll take advantage of that when it comes to it. Yeah. And what about uh, miniaturizing the, the technology even further than clearly what you already have? Well, we're working with some of the most technologically advanced companies in, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, they've shown us a, a miniature compressor. Yeah. So yes, on the horizon, uh, we could certainly reduce the weight by about five kilos, which would be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, but, but you know, the interesting thing is this, when it comes to miniaturizing heat transfer, mm -hmm. you start to run up against the second law of thermodynamics, mm -hmm. entropy and all that stuff that you might have, just, you might have covered in physics in your mm -hmm. university courses. Uh, you know, there is a limit. Yeah. And actually, if we try and, re it, try and shrink it any further, then it gets so inefficient, it's not worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, if you could shrink it really further, then you'd be able to create that self-drying jacket we saw in Back to the Future too. <laughs> yes, but, you know, there's a difference between fact and fiction. That's right. Well, that... second, second law of thermodynamics establishes some pretty firm boundaries. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. And so, you know, how, how else do you see this technology evolving into the future over the next decade? Or, I mean, without well, giving any secrets away. No, no, no. Our, our vision is to enable everybody in the planet to enjoy air conditioning. You know, if we tried to do that using today's technology, mm -hmm. the room air conditioning technology, when you think about it, we've got hundreds of millions of buildings on this planet that were never designed for air conditioning. Yeah. They're not insulated. Mm -hmm. We'll cripple the planet if we do that. And we're well on the way to trying at the moment. Yes. The idea of this technology is we can bypass that problem. And I'm pretty confident that we could, we could take 15% off the worst case scenario that the IPCC has 
predicted for 2100. Yeah. That would be a huge benefit for our sustainability. And, and presumably you'd be lowering people's electricity bills by a lot more than 15%. It's a lot more than that. You know, you have to understand that hundreds of millions, possibly billions of people don't sleep for months at a time. Mm. They just can't because of the humidity mm. and the heat. Remember in my bedroom in Pakistan, 41 degrees at midnight. Yeah. Right. So if they don't sleep at night, there's very little work done during the day. Mm. And if you look at the history of the US, the thing that really propelled the US economy, now recognized by all the leading economists, air conditioning. Mm. Because it meant that two thirds of the population living in the hot and steamy parts of the US could sleep at night and you know, then they make miracles during the day. Yeah, the recently uh, passed away president of uh, Singapore said that the best invention in his lifetime was air conditioning. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So um, what does it cost to buy the Close Comfort and where can you buy it from? Uh, we're selling at six forty nine, mm -hmm. uh, and you can buy it at our online store. And we're setting up three bricks and mortar stores in Melbourne, uh, Sydney, and Brisbane. We're working with partners here on the east coast, where mm -hmm. we think the big market is, because this is where you get the hot and humid weather. And, well, we get the sleepless nights in the Sydney summers and Canberra summers. So, exactly. I mean, nowhere so, near as crazy as Pakistan, but still, we all complain about it. Exactly. So. Yeah. We'll be publicising that on our, web, on sure. our website. And so it's closecomfort.com.au? Closecomfort.com.au. And is that for sale globally? Can someone from Pakistan buy it from the Australian website? Or do you have a websites in other parts of the world well, as well? In, in theory, we can actually do that. But obviously, in Pakistan, we have our online store there. We're selling through uh, online merchants in Pakistan, like mm -hmm. the equivalent of Amazon.com. Yep. Also, the major department stores. Yeah, And it's going really well there. And so how long has it been available now for? It's been available for two years in Pakistan. Yeah. And this is our first season in Australia. Australia. So many people in Australia said, why don't you sell it here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's why we're here. And so it must be a huge hit in Pakistan. It is. Yeah, it just flies off the shelves. Yeah. You know, we're, we're still a small company, so we only have limited capacity to produce them, and mm -hmm. they just go like that. Yeah, wonderful. So look, as we get to the towards the end of the interview, I always like to ask the people that I'm interviewing if they could please share some of the best advice that, that they've received, that you've received, to help you get where you are today. I saw that question on your list. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you know, you have to imagine me. Most of my life, I've been a professor, yeah. mechatronics engineering. My wife robotics. Is, robotics. My wife is a professor of political science, and there we were in our lounge room in Lahore, stacked to the ceiling with boxes of containing air conditioners, and we turned to each other and we said, "Well, professor, what do we do now? <laughs> you know, we never thought about how we sell them." Yeah. And her advice was, "Pray." Mm -hmm. We did, yeah. and wonderful people came into our lives, and yes, here we are two years later, we're selling in five countries. Wonderful. That's really, really a positive story. And um, so, do you, what is your final message for ITY viewers and readers and for people around the world watching this? I'm really excited about this because I think we can transform so many, the lives of so many millions, billions of people around this planet. And I think I'd like it to be an inspiration for so many other people. You know, we're talking about in Australia, how do we, you know, how do we get 50 cents a week off the price of electricity? Mm. Well, for goodness sake, you know, we can slice electricity bills, not only at homes, but also in businesses, factories, all around the place. And that's the big challenge, and I think it's a really exciting one for the coming generation of engineers. Well, Professor James Trevelyan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inventing this uh, device. It's going to be a few hot days later this week in Sydney, and I'm looking very much forward to turning it on and enjoying the, the cool temperature this will deliver. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alex.